Hey guys, it's Carrie, your friendly neighborhood teen librarian from the Rapid City Public Library. And in the series, we try to teach you a little bit about things that you might not run across in your everyday life. I've run into a couple of roadblocks though. I can't teach you how to whistle, and I can't teach you how to juggle, and I really wanted to do one of those two things. But I happen to know a wonderful lady who works with me here at the library. Her name is Jules, and she is a prolific juggler. So she's gonna teach you a little bit about how to get started. Hi, I'm Jules. I work here at the Rapid City Public Library, and I'm here to help you teach yourself how to do a three ball cascade. Now there are lots of ways to learn to juggle. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the things that worked for me. A lot of people like to practice first with scarves and the benefit of scarves is that they have a lot of hang time in the air. So if you're nervous about being fast enough to catch it, scarves might be the way to go for you. It'll be a little bit of a different motion than if you're juggling with bean bags or balls. You'll be, <laughs> you will be, uh, throwing them and kind of snatching them out of the air in a clawing motion rather than throwing. Now, if you don't have scarves at home, you can use plastic bags. And it looks kind of like this. Great. Um, so for me, I learned how to juggle a lot easier when I just started off with bean bags and balls. So if the scarves work for you, fantastic. If they don't, uh, what you can do is you can use your hands and your rage to just uh, crumple that up into a ball and you can actually scotch tape this and now you've got your very own DIY juggling balls. Um, so with these you'll be able to practice a little bit more of the throw that you get when you're juggling um, with solid objects. Um, so either way is fine. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with the balls just because that's what I am more comfortable with. So these will work just fine, but of course you could also use a hacky sack or a tennis ball. One of the problems with tennis balls is that when they fall on the floor, they roll away and then you have to go chase them, which is a bummer. It can be discouraging if you're dropping things a lot and you're totally gonna be dropping things constantly. Um, so that's where bean bags can come in handy. And we actually have a sewing machine in our maker space. So if you would like to come on down to the library and use our sewing machine, we've got some material you can use. We have some rice that you can fill your bags with and you can sew yourselves some nice bean bags and these will be great for juggling. So of course you're going to drop your objects probably a lot, but you can set yourself up for success by kind of setting the field. Um, if you don't want to bend over as far to pick up things that you drop, you could certainly practice over a couch or a mattress or a table and then you just have to kind of reach over and get it. Some people have a lot of success by kneeling on the floor and then juggling there and then you only have to reach down to the floor to get it. Um, that's really hard on my knees, um, so I like to practice over a couch. Another problem people run into is that when they're juggling they accidentally throw too far in front of themselves and then they do kind of a run juggle. One way to prevent that is to practice directly in front of a wall, and this will make sure that you're juggling in a plane in front of you and not throwing them forward. Uh, so the wall can be helpful. So if you have a couch up against a wall, that would be pretty much perfect. So we are going to start with just one object so that we can establish the pattern. This is gonna be super boring, but it is gonna help your brain to accept the pattern later on. So we're gonna start like this. We're gonna to toss this up and then over to this hand and basically create a skewed infinity loop. So as I throw it up to the other hand, it's crossing kind of in front of my nose and then it's peaking about here. So we go around in a little bit of an infinity loop. And yeah, super, super duper boring, but this is important. It's gonna keep you from making mistakes later. So go ahead and practice. Practice this until you've got about 10 catches. Make sure you're counting your catches and not the number of times you drop it. That's an easy way to get discouraged. Uh, if you can do about 10 catches in a row, you are ready to introduce a second object. Now we've got two. Um, and this time when we throw this first bag, and it crosses in front of our nose, then we're going to throw the second bag to the other hand. So toss, toss, catch, catch, 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 toss, toss, cat
toss, toss, catch, catch, toss, toss, catch, catch. This is really going to make your brain hurt. Uh, it's probably the most difficult step, at least for me it was. Uh, so don't feel bad if you get kind of stuck on this. Just toss, toss, catch, and just see if you can catch those and just stop and see if you can get your brain kind of dialed in on that. Sometimes it is helpful to go to sleep and try again the next day and it'll actually be a little bit easier. Um, so don't get discouraged. Once you can catch both of these, uh, let's say 20 times in a row, you are probably ready to introduce a third object. Okay, here we go. Let's get ready to mess up some more. Uh, so now you're gonna have two objects in one hand and you need to make sure that you kind of make room for both of them. Uh, so I like to have one kind of in my palm and the other more at the tips of my fingers and get ready for that in your other hand as well. So I'm gonna toss three and catch three and I'm still doing that pattern. I'm still doing that kind of skewed infinity loop. So throw, <laughs> throw, 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 catch. Throw, 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 catch. Throw, throw, throw. And just keep going like that. Um, so it is going to take a lot of practice, especially now that you're gonna have one hand with two things in it um, almost at the same time. You're always gonna have one in the air and uh, the ones in your hands. And you might accidentally be throwing it over here or it might go way too high. Uh, don't worry, keep practicing, that is the key. I should have practiced over a couch. <laughs> Amazing, you're juggling, I'm so proud of you. Uh, another tip, if you're wondering where to look, don't look at your hands, because then you're gonna miss where things are going. Um, I like to look kind of right here around the nose area, or you can kind of watch as each of them peek on the tips of those infinity loops. Now, there are tons of three ball patterns, so once you feel really comfortable with this three ball cascade, uh, you can start mixing it up. You could do a reverse cascade, which is kind of throwing over instead of under. Um, you can do whatever this is called, I forget. Um, I think this one is called tennis. The purple bag is just going back and forth over the others. You could do a rainbow, which looks vaguely like that. Some people will also juggle by just throwing up and down instead of throwing in loops, which is pretty fun and challenging. And then uh, you can get into some more advanced tricks. Um, there's tons of really wild stuff out there. So I would encourage you to practice. It is a great kind of hobby to have if you're stuck indoors due to winter or say a pandemic. Uh, just make sure you're not practicing next to the 3D printers or else Carrie might make this face. So thanks for following along guys and thank you to Jules for showing us how it's done. If you guys want to know more about juggling, we've got a couple of books in our collection. You can check them out, take them home, teach yourself even a little bit more about juggling. So thanks for following along. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.